Hi everyone, Dr. Remy from Pain Free and Fit. Today we're going to be going over and answering your frustrating questions about how to recruit the multifidus muscle in the lower back to help reduce the pain of your degenerative disc disease, spondylolisthesis, and other low back problems. So the multifidus is a small but vital muscle in preventing lower back pain. Many patients with degenerative disc disease, with spondylolisthesis, with chronic pain in the back, have a weak or atrophied, meaning wasted or smaller, unconditioned multifidus muscle. And the multifidus comes off the center sides of the lower back vertebra. If you go to your back and feel the bony knobs in your lower back, and if you go to the bottom of any one of those knobs and bring one thumb to the right side and one thumb to the left side, that's where the multifidus is. You have one on the right and left of every vertebra. And they help hold and stabilize those vertebra. When the multifidus is weak, when the multifidus is atrophied, it can't stabilize the vertebra. So during your motions, your vertebra is more likely to make excessive motion and dysfunctional movements, which can cause your pain. So to strengthen the multifidus, we first have to figure out where a multifidus is weak or atrophied. So if you go back with your thumbs to those bony knobs and feel on the very bottom of each knob, off to the right side and the left side, the right and left lower corners of each knob, and you breathe out all the way, exhale, and then after your normal exhalation, exhale out the reserve that's in your lungs, meaning there's a little bit more left in, the multifidus contracts with that maneuver. And if you do that at each of the bony knobs in your lower back, there's five knobs in the lower back, you may feel that on one side or another, there isn't as much meat or tension in where the muscle attaches. You know, normal muscle has a certain contour or meat to it that you can feel. Same thing with that multifidus. So if you feel an area that's hollowed or like a valley under your finger on one side with normal standing posture, or after that, exhale and further exhale, then that's a site where the multifidus is weak or is atrophied and needs some care, needs some exercise, some healing stimulus to start engaging it, recruiting it, and using it to help prevent your pain. So there's four basic ways we can use to increase multifidus contractions or to learn how to neurologically gain control over multifidus so we can start training it. However, none of them are going to be effective if you have a global body posture or movement habit that's not centered. If you have a tendency to turn your pelvis, let's say, to one side because you do so more to one side than another during the day, or tilt your ribs, or have an anterior pelvis where the tailbone is higher than the pubic bone, all those things are going to throw off the normal alignment pattern of your lower back and contribute to multifidus weakness. So if you're trying to learn how to contract your multifidus muscle and you haven't yet figured out what your body posture flaws are and how to correct them to get aligned, then you're really wasting your time. So what I would suggest is you go to either the Pain Free and Fit or the Posture Size websites where we have a free body analysis and learn where your unique dysfunctional posture habits are so you know how to correct a slight tilt or a slight rotation or a slight A to P or forward to backward postural abnormality in your lower back. Many times you look in the mirror and say, oh yeah, I'm square. But in reality, upon movement, what you'll find is you have a tendency to hip hike on one side or rotate. So even a millimeter or two movement can make a big difference when it comes to multifidus training. That being said, if we know we have a square body structure and an alignment is good, the first technique to increase the multifidus we've already shared with you, which is simply trying to exhale and then exhale the reserve that's left in your lungs further and you'll feel the multifidus contract. If you do that where you felt that hollow or that depression on the bottom corner of your vertebra, that will help to engage the multifidus. You'll actually feel it bulge out into your finger. And in doing so, you want to hold that contraction as then you start breathing again. And that's a little tricky. It takes a little practice to figure out, can I get it to contract upon exhalation? Then can I hold that tension as I start to breathe? The second technique we can use is to focus on the transverse abdominus contraction, which is the deepest lower abdominal muscle that runs crosswise in our body. We engage this muscle because it attaches to fascia or connective tissue that 
engages and attaches to the multifidus. So they work together. It's called co-contraction. So if you pull your lower abdomen, that's under your belly button, inwards towards your spine, and think of a funnel-shaped tension with the large end of the funnel being your lower abdomen, as that pulls in, the tension narrows down to a spout, which is directly where your finger is, where you're having difficulty with that multifidus. And that tension pulling in will oftentimes create that tension bulging out into your finger as the multifidus contraction. Another technique we can use for multifidus contraction is to try to use an arm raise on the other side. If I'm trying to get a multifidus contraction on my left hand side, I'll take the opposite arm and start to raise it forward. And at a certain height, you'll notice there's a little tension in that multifidus. The trick then is to try to hold that tension as I lower my arm. If I feel the multifidus then shut off again and release its tension under my thumb, I raise again, hold it, and come down a little bit. So that's a training technique where you train yourself slower and slower, inch by inch you come down while still holding the tension in there. Finally, we can use a technique where we're going to use extension, and that can be used in two different ways for the multifidus. Number one, we can simply try to hip hinge forward from our hips. We've talked about hip hinge before in some of our videos, where I'm going to try to rotate my hip right through my head forward without bending my waist or from my lower back. I'm trying to spin my pelvis on my hip joints. And as I bend or rotate forward just an inch with my whole pelvis, I'll many times feel that multifidus contract underneath my finger. Now remember, you don't want to have your fingers away from those bones in the middle line. If your fingers are out a quarter or a half an inch even out to the side, you're going to be more likely to start feeling the erector spinae muscles or the latissimus dorsi thoracolumbar fascia contract. So you want to be right against those bones because right against those bones, the multifidus is the only muscle that's there. So that's the only thing that's really going to bulge or thicken out outside of connective tissue fascial sheets. So the technique with this particular method is slowly leaning forward from the hips as the pelvis rotates, holding the multifidus, feeling the contraction, and then trying to maintain that tension under your thumb as you then re-extend your hips back upwards. And you can go back and forth until you feel that multifidus kick in and then trying to bring it back. You can also use extension by using the leg back walking or gait cycle technique, which we're going to put one leg back, put our hands on our multifidus, and that leg that's back is going to be on the same side that we have the multifidus weakness on. And then all we're going to do is we're going to move forward by raising our heel as if we're walking and allow our chest to move straight forward. And as the heel comes up, you'll begin to feel that multifidus contract under your thumb. Then you're, of course, going to try to hold that multifidus contraction as your heel comes back down. And you can play back and forth with your ability to get the multifidus to stay contracted. So with any of these techniques, you're trying to use any of these methods to try to fire on or wake up the multifidus, feeling it bulge into your fingers, and then you're going to try to hold that as you go back into a neutral position and as you breathe normally. The important part is many people when trying to gain muscular contraction that they're not used to try to hold their breath. And we're not trying to hold our breath with core tension. We're trying to breathe normally as we engage these core muscles, including the multifidus. So if you like this video and you'd like more stabilization training, please feel free to subscribe to our channel. We've got lots of great exercises for chronic lower back pain, degenerative discs. If you'd like to help me share this vital information with other people, give me a thumbs up below. Let's get the word out and share this with others. And if you'd like more information about healing exercise programs for lower back pain, they're all available on the Pain Free and Fit website. I hope this helps with your multifidus training and your degenerative disc lower back pain.